morning friends and welcome to a very bookish video. We are going to Powell's. However, I'm still on my book buying ban and it's gone rather successfully if I'm honest. Um, but I'm actually going to Powell's to meet up with a friend. So two months ago, I bumped into Sarah, who is a wonderful, kind, happy human being. We bumped into each other on a hike. She recognized me from my videos and she absolutely made my day when she said hello. And she just so happens to be the social media coordinator for Powell's City of Books. And she reached out and wants to give me a gift, a Powell's gift. This video is not a partnership and I'm not sponsored in any way. This is just Sarah, a new friend who also happens to work for Powell's, giving me a fun Powell's related gift. So I'm nervous, excited. We're going there first thing this morning and I also invited Sarah to tea slash coffee. So we're gonna do that. And I would love to do some book browsing. I'm not gonna buy anything, but it'll be fun to just see the summer reads and wander through the many rooms of Powell's books because it's been far too long. So if any of that sounds good to you, go ahead and make yourselves a heartwarming cup of tea or coffee, weird fingers. <laughs> Grab your coziest of comfy blankets. Powell's awaits. send us a message it's me inside the dms yeah i have a gift for morgan who always shows our mugs so beautifully and so we just made a new mug i wanted to give you one thank you so much yeah. i'm surprised it's smaller than i thought it was just like a little i like the size a little tea mug specifically yes. i love it <laughs> Elegant with a touch of whimsy. A touch of whimsical. I love it. An understated blue. Yes. <laughs> Which is the color of the day. Exactly. <laughs> Yay. I'm still in my book buying band, but Sarah has three books she's interested in finding, so I'm gonna explore with her and take you guys along. So good. There's no such thing as an easy job. You Ooh. asked me when we were getting coffee, what is a book that I think everyone should read? Yeah? You are a millennial woman. <laughs> millennial Trying woman. To figure out what's going on. Yeah. This is what uh, It was so, so good. Uh, I found myself telling people about her jobs. Oh, <laughs> and it makes my book buying ban so difficult, but I would love to read it. The one thing I always tell people about is to make sure you get a used copy, which you know. Yes. Uh, but you might not know that we try and always put the used copies first. Oh, really? Yeah. Just so that people can find them a little easier. But it doesn't always happen. But look, we did it right away. <laughs> Great job, booksellers. Uh, so this used copy is probably the one I'll get. But I'll take a look at the others. Let's see. That one's new. I could try a used hardcover. Yeah, usually the hardbacks actually end up being Ooh. pretty cheap. This one's expensive. Oh, wow. An interesting edition. It's like a library binding. Oh, it's a first edition. It's a first edition. Yeah. $34 for a first edition. But it's a fancy hardcover. This is actually one of my favorite books. It's very character development driven rather than plot driven. And I just love the protagonist. I love the narrator. It's mm, so funny, so witty. 
So wonderful. An addition that I want. Ooh, there's an addition that you want of um, the Lord of the Rings. Of Lord of the Rings, and it's a it's a mass market edition of the first book. And so I always check because at Powell sometimes we have like a couple different versions of any given book, but it doesn't look like we have the edition that I want today. Ah, I'm also on the hunt for an edition because I bought this one because it was like five dollars mm -hmm. and had all three books, but I really don't like. <laughs> the cover. I also, that's the one I have. Yeah. And I got it when I was 10. Oh. Uh, I also want a better edition. That's still a great one. Yes, exactly. But, like, Beautiful. beautiful. It has straight edges, which I'm not mm. always a fan of. Yeah, I have, I have this edition of The Hobbit and I really like this art and homey feel. So it'd be nice to find a similar one. That special edition, this one has his art in it. Oh he no was, way! He was an yes, and I love his art. And the partner edition of the Silmarillion is so beautiful. That is beautiful. I loved A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And of course, Howl's Moving Castle. I actually have Caravale and I'm excited to read it. Same with Shadow and Bone. Witch King by Martha Wells. Did you do the, oh you did the answer, that's what you said. Maybe I only want to read epic fantasies with hyper competent protagonists tasked with solving their own murders served with the side of massive geopolitical complications. Thanks Martha Wells. <laughs> That sounds amazing. It was so fun. Publisher build it as Six of Crows meets The Untamed, which The Untamed is a, is a Netflix show. Oh. Uh, or Netflix distributes it. It's a Chinese show. But it's the character has like died and been resurrected and needs to figure out like what Who killed? happened. Oh, there. Yeah. That premise is very interesting to me. I really like Ann Patchett and I actually read this book a few years ago and there's a part where the main characters are at an airport and I actually bought this book at the same airport that the main characters were in because I had a really long layover and I spent the day there reading this book and I was awed when the characters were at the same airport that I was in while I was reading the book, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Shelf adventure. A top shelf adventure? Yes. How very exciting! Seeking an old book. How old is Cersei? Cersei came out in 2018, I think. So that's considered old? Well, it's, it's not like a new release. So it's not like, oh, she's <laughs> on the hunt for a new release. But I have loved this book since it came out, and I've never owned a copy. And yeah. I wanted a used paper or a used hardcover. This one looks beautiful, and I think I'm going to bring it home. Yay! What an amazing haul. Can I just look at them? <laughs> Today's book haul. Sarah and a stack of books. Though. My natural habitat. <laughs> yes, indeed. You belong here. Hello again. Ah, what an outing. I feel so uplifted after that. Sarah is absolutely wonderful. Not only did I get to be among the books again, but it felt so good to be greeted by a friend while walking into Powell's and also kind of get to walk around with someone who knows the store better than me even and learn some fun facts. I can still remember the day that I stepped foot into Powell's for the first time. It was shortly after I moved to Portland and I had no idea what I was walking into and I remember just crying. It had been a hard time those first that first year in Portland was really hard for me. And when I walked into Powell's, I just felt like I had stumbled into a magical world and a safe haven of sorts. And I spent the whole day there. I had no idea at the time that I would be a YouTuber or a booktuber. I had no idea that I would film a video inside of Powell's that kind of would take off <laughs> and build my channel. I didn't know any of this, but if that Morgan from four or five years ago who first stepped foot into the bookstore could see what my life is now and could have experienced this morning, she would absolutely be sobbing, crying.
crying, tears of joy, definitely. Um, I'm just really glad that things have turned out the way that they are. And I have a Powell's mug. I have a new Powell's mug. It's so cute. It's like a little tea sachet thing, paper thing. I'm not sure what the official term is. And um, Powell's books, Portland, Oregon. So this is a gift from a friend, but to me, it's also a um, symbol, if you will, of the progress I've made in my life. Not to get too cheesy or not to place too much meaning on a mug, but you know, I bought the yellow Powell's mug years and years ago and here i am living my dream life as a youtuber being recognized by someone who works at powell's as such and being given gifted a mug a powell's mug if i had known then that this is where i'd be again tears of joy before we talk books i need a bite to eat and i'm craving an avocado toast so i'm gonna make myself a hearty avocado toast, avocado toast, and then we can talk books. before eating something. <laughs> something I'm excited about, that is. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh. Savory. Spicy with that hot sauce. It's a satisfying mix of citrus with the lemon and the cilantro, kind of refreshing notes, but then the spicy touch of the hot sauce. Ooh, gives it a body. And then the crunch of the toast and the cabbage and the kale. It really is quite hearty. Mmm. <laughs> knocked my candle off this table. I'll start with books that I have read and would recommend, and then next I'll share with you books that I'm excited to read over the course of the summer. So, to begin with, let's do adult fiction. The first book that I would like to recommend is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. This is one of my all-time favorite reads, and I think it's great for summer because, well, it takes place during summer, if I remember correctly. And it's a wonderful mix of adventure, 
magic and heartwarming gooeyness. <laughs> it follows the trope of misfits finding family with each other, or people who feel like they don't belong in regular society finding a community, finding a home, finding love in each other. And it's really so lovely and funny. It's a quick, uplifting, summer sunshine read. My next recommendation is The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating by Elizabeth Tova Bailey. This was a gift from my lovely cocoon friends. And I actually read it over the course of last summer and was definitely a comfort read throughout that time and helped me to appreciate the intricacies of nature and notice things that I had previously missed, like the beauty of snails. It tells the story, I think it's a memoir. The author, Elizabeth, becomes extremely ill and is bedridden. Her whole life is turned upside down and she finds comfort in a very odd place, which is a snail that her friend gives her when she brings a get better plant, there's a snail on it, and Elizabeth kind of observes this snail through the duration of her illness. And I think the summary says it best. The sound of a wild snail eating is a remarkable journey of survival and resilience, showing us how a small part of the natural world can illuminate our own human existence while providing an appreciation of what it means to be fully alive. Ah, <sighs> yes, exactly. And during the summer months, I feel the most alive. It always feels like a time of growth and change. And I feel that so intensely <laughs> this summer, especially. And so I'm extra sensitive to the intricacies of human experience and the feeling of being alive and the bittersweet nature of it all. And I'd say all that is in this book. <laughs> it's also really short. Next, of course, I have The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, and this and the Lord of the Rings books I feel like are such good summer reads, especially if you plan on going for a hike or any form of outdoor adventure. <laughs> this is the best companion for such an activity, though I must warn you, I found myself always hungry while reading The Hobbit because Hobbits love food. They have their first breakfast and second breakfast. They're always so hungry and it made me so hungry, but at the same time it made me really appreciate things like bread. But if you're craving woodland adventure and elven type magic and a bit of silliness in song and rhyme, this is a great book. And similarly, this feels out of left field, but a book I love reading during the summer is A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. I feel very into fairies this summer. Fairies and mermaids. It's a fairy tale type summer. And I recently went to a renaissance fair and made a butterfly crown. I'm gonna make a YouTube tutorial on how I made this crown, but renaissance fair, butterfly crown, whimsical music, fairies and wildflowers and mermaids are very much the feel of this girl power summer. And that being said, the audiobook adaptation of this play is wonderful and has really good music and sound effects. It puts me immediately in a fairy-like setting and there's fairies in this play. Which reminds me, actually, another book I'd love to recommend for summer reading is Stardust by Neil Gaiman. That's a really good, quick, easy, uh, fairy-like read. Lots of adventure, magic, song, and mischief. Also, generally speaking, during the summer, I have more energy. I think it's because the sun sets so much later. It feels like the days are longer. I guess technically they are. But in the winter at 5 p.m., it's dark and I'm ready to cozy up in my warm bed. In the summertime, the sun doesn't set here until about 9 p.m. And so once I finished work, I'm generally ready to do something else. And so historically, I've picked up a new hobby during the summer. And I would love to recommend a hobby book, which is The Law's Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling, written and illustrated by John Muir Laws. So this is a book all about 
nature journaling and drawing and I actually picked it up um, in summer of 2020 and it was part of my inspiration to learn how to draw and one of the initial stepping stones to learning how to draw and it's basically a beautifully illustrated instructional book about how to get out in nature and observe and appreciate your surroundings and then capture it <laughs> in the form of illustration. And it's really fun to flip through and have a go at plants and animals and landscapes. There's a bit of everything in here and it would be a really great companion for a picnic if you were to pack a sketchbook and some colored pencils or crowns or watercolors or even just a pencil. A pencil is good enough. A pencil and paper. If you were to bring this, a pencil and paper, and some yummy food on a picnic, I think you'd have a really lovely outing. At least that's what I've done many times. So yeah, kind of a fun way to enjoy summer and learn something new. Now I have the books that I would like to read or am reading and conveniently it's five books. Five books in each pile. Okay, as you guys may have seen if you watched my previous video, I am reading Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This is actually the book that my book club is reading on Patreon, and I haven't read much more than I did while at the cafe, but I enjoyed the first three chapters that I have read, and Sarah really recommends this book. So. I feel newly inspired to dive in and I think I'll spend a good hour reading it this evening. This morning I began The Apricot Memoirs by Tess Gurney and this was a gift from Annette. Thank you so much Annette. It is a book of poetry. I guess it's poetry. Oh, it's so beautiful from the apricot colored pages and the red ink or pink ink. It's so raw. This seems to be a book of poetry written by a woman really coming into herself, embracing a big life change and all the emotions that come with it, and pursuing her dream self. Perhaps I'm projecting because that's exactly what I'm going through right now, but reading the first few poems slash entries of this book, they connected to a sadness that I feel inside of me, a bittersweet sadness, that of change and growth. This book feels like a wildflower read, if ever there was one. That being said, I'm only like, how far am I? I'm only 10 pages in, so keep that in mind if you do decide to read this. I haven't read it yet. I've only read 10 pages and I'm very much looking forward to reading the rest of it. But I can't recommend it yet because I haven't finished it or, you know, I'm not yet familiar with it. And same goes for The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. I've had this for about two years and it's time. I'm ready to read it. It centers around a strong female protagonist. It's fantasy. I think courage will be a big value here. Outcasts by blood, warriors by choice. Yeah, fierce. <laughs> Let me just keep throwing adjectives out. This is pretty personal, but I picked up this workbook at the end of last year, and it's called The Anxious Perfectionist, How to Manage Perfectionism-Driven Anxiety Using Acceptance and Commitment Therapy by Clarissa W. Ong, PhD, and Michael P. Twy, PhD, with a foreword by Randy O. Frost, PhD. And this is basically a workbook all about uncovering your perfectionist slash anxiety roots and how to work through them, better understand them, and manage your perfectionist-based anxiety when it occurs, which is something that I've developed over the years. I think I've had for a very long time, actually, but am facing recently within the past year. And you guys, it's been so helpful. I feel like you get out of a book whatever you pour into the book. So I am going at a slow pace and I've already felt so called out by this book. I was taking notes, underlining sentences, writing down in a journal. 
and the book even said, put your pen down, stop taking notes. You don't have to be perfect at reading this, just read. <laughs> I felt called out. It was so accurate. Reading this book feels like reading about me. So if you're someone who struggles with perfectionism, this has been a big help so far. I have not finished, but it's something that I'm working on probably over the course of the summer. And lastly, I have another workbook, The Complete Book of Drawing, Essential Skills for Every Artist. I am continuing along on my journey of learning how to draw, and this is a book that I'm really excited about. It focuses mostly on human anatomy. I'm curious to learn more of the technical skills Oops. <laughs> around shading and proper proportions and angles, perspective, things of that sort, things that I've kind of just scooted by on my illustration journey. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm looking forward to replacing time I would normally spend scrolling on my phone with time spent practicing drawing and learning more of the technical aspects of the art. Those are my summer reading recommendations and the books I look forward to reading this summer. Usually this time of year isn't exactly a productive reading time. I find that I read far more during the autumn and the winter. Let me know if you have any suggestions down below. I am still on my book buying ban, but I own a surprising amount of books and also I've kept a running list of books that I'm interested in buying once the year is up. I foresee a huge book haul at the beginning of next year, but really it has been fun to just peruse my shelves and actually read the books that I already own. And now that I've done away with my 50 book school, I don't feel so guilty about being in a slower reading pace. It's actually quite nice. It's really freeing and I've been enjoying books more even though I've read fewer of them. Before I dive into my books, I did just want to thank you all so very much for your incredible response to my last video and your enthusiasm, <laughs> support, encouragement, and love surrounding Solo Girl Power Summer, or as I've deemed it, Wildflower Summer. As I said in the last video, this is going to be a summer of growth, a summer of resilience, a summer of loneliness, a summer of joy, a summer of girl power. It is my wildflower summer. I'm blooming. You're blooming. We're blooming together. And this marks episode two of the journey. Look forward to more frequent casual videos from me. And thank you so much again and again for being here, friends. I'm sending you all very, very big hugs. <sighs> I love you very much, and I'll see you soon.